and we are so delighted to have with us Christopher Rogers, General Manager, ANZAC Mambu. Sir, please. Uh, hello, um, audience, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me um, for this session where we'll be looking at digital banking from the cloud up. Uh, for me, that's truly the future of core banking, and uh, we'd like to use this session to explore what that might look like. My name is Chris. I'm the general manager of Australia and New Zealand for Mambu. I'll tell you a little bit about us during this session as well. So without any further ado, let's cut to the chase and admit together that everything is changing. It's impossible to think where we've come in such a short time when it comes to technology. Um, does anyone in the room or the virtual room today remember this? This is the iPod. I still proudly own an iPod Classic into which I could cram my entire music collection. That was revolutionary at the time. It was groundbreaking. It was incredible. Now fast forward to where we are today and we can hold 60 million songs on our wrist. Now, who could have thought that was possible? Who could have thought there were data centers, bandwidth, uh, availability, streaming time to deliver such an incredible wealth of data and music on a wrist piece? So things have changed fundamentally, and that's very important for us to consider as we explore what banking might look like in the future. Banks are changing too. And rightly so. Um, we couldn't have imagined where technology would have been today, 15 years ago. And in fact, that's when the larger banks in the world were making decisions around core banking. And only now have we got an opportunity to look at what that core banking might look like um, moving forward. So that's really what I want to touch on this morning, because to me, this is a, a local bank in Australia, a photo taken quite recently to sort of illustrate how a lot of the systems and technology we use now are antiquated. Um, I have a passbook still from my original bank, um, and that to me was a trusted source of money keeping. Um, everything has changed, and that's what we have to really think forward about today. Um, so for me, the fundamental thing for us this today to consider is Technology was built to last before, and rightly so, but today technology has to be built to change. Um, and that's a very important difference into how we approach the technologies we use in financial services and banking. The advent of cloud technology and cloud servicing is the innovation that meets that new constant, which indeed is change. So think about how companies today that we all know Grab, Uber, Airbnb have done what they've done to disrupt key verticals. And I'd argue it's a, well, it is only possible through cloud technologies. Um, imagine if Uber wanted to get uh, enough data rooms to cater for their busiest time. The expense five years ago would have been fundamentally large. Now, with global loading and cloud services, we can operate at scale, even with the simplest and most basic ideas. And that's exactly how companies like Uber and Airbnb have been able to pivot change and radically reinvent how we approach accommodation, hotels, and indeed taxi services. Again, it couldn't be more important for us in the financial services world to consider how we can utilize that kind of impact and scalability to deliver tomorrow's banking services. To take it a step further, banking services have never been under more pressure than they are today. So why is that? Well, there's several factors um, leading to change. The first is that customer-driven demand um, leads to the need for better experiences. We expect everything now, we expect it within seconds, and we expect it to, to serve our needs and expectations. We have unrivaled access to technology. We're, we're living in a digital native world now, um, and that at the same breath, there's also a lack of time and patience in the mix. So we have all had to reimagine what the customer experience is. And thankfully, we see banks today, specifically who we work with at Mambu, really putting the customer-centric, customer-first approach to their core banking and their technologies. So that's incredibly important. Um, obviously, with this advent of technology and how it's used, the, the ability to crunch data in real time um, and then use that data to serve more personalized um, products is changing the way in which we can spin out banking and financial services products as well. 
Of course, across the APAC region and globally, there are regulatory changes. Um, in many instances, that leading, that's leading to lower barriers of entry um, and creating better ways for a competitive landscape to be nourished. Banks and financial services established or emerging have to be aware of that. It's leveling the playing field. So how can we adopt to that change readily and speed to market suddenly becomes much more important. Finally, uh, as the fintech ecosystems across the globe glow, uh, grow rather and glow in, in some instances when the unicorns pop up, um, this cheap access to capital and ability to scale um, and, and innovate is putting more traditional companies at risk or certainly challenging them to think differently. So specific nuances to the banking services, but this fundamentally escalated uh, innovation is impacting how we approach banking. So in this session, it's the short time that we have together. I just want to focus on three simple things. The first is Mambu's approach to what we call composable banking, which I'll come to in a moment. The second is what a cloud up approach looks like if we are building a new bank or modernizing an existing bank or its tech stack to be more specific. And finally, let's look at greenfield opportunities versus evolution and what that might look like if we are looking to build a bank from the cloud up. Let me take a few moments just to tell you a little bit more about Mambu for those that are joining us today that don't know who we are. Um, we're very proud to, to operate in 63 plus countries across the globe uh, with 250 clients that are spinning out 300 live operations as of today. Um, we stand up more than 6,000 loan and deposit products and couldn't be more proud to have done that. We do that in a relatively lean way. Um, we are a company growing towards 500 staff at the end of this year. We've been uh, afforded many accolades for our approach to market. Um, and most importantly, we're, we're not a new kid on the block. We're, we've been doing this for a while, founded in 2011. We have offices in Singapore, Sydney, headquarters in Berlin, production centers in Yash and Dresden, and we service all global footprints as Mambu. In terms of our clientele, we're, we're helping them to power more than 20 million uh, end users. And we're not just talking working with the larger banks across the globe, helping them modernize and create new products, but also with traditional lenders, emerging banks, uh, large enterprise companies pivoting towards financial services. So a, a really incredible footprint of household names and emerging brands, helping them embrace a new way to handle core banking and deliver financial services. It's worth taking a moment to speak to this idea of composable. We truly believe we're entering an era of componentization, platformication, and this concept of composability. What does that mean in, in simple terms? It's the ability to create your own banking symphony, the ability to create your own products and not be locked into one way of doing things. And that's an incredible philosophy to embrace. Composable banking is essentially enabling you to be flexible, allowing you to deliver speed to market and also not being locked in to that traditional way. There's vendor flexibility. Mambu is the only cloud native uh, core banking platform in the globe. And we adopt a true SaaS approach to the market, licensing these products to you, continually iterating with our product enhancements that's driven by you fundamentally. Um, another way of looking at that is through our core principles. Um, let's not go high code, high resource. Let's Let's customize through configurability, the ability to configure products easily without having to build up too much proprietary tech debt. That's fundamental, uh, fundamentally a core principle for Mambu. As I said, we're, we're, we're cloud native and API first, making it easy to ingest, simple to build an ecosystem and plug into the wider um, ecosystem that you may use for other processes in the end-to-end -end solution. We have a laser sharp focus on core banking. It's a singular product focus that allows our entire client base across the globe and in those 63 plus countries to all leverage the same code base to build out your products. 
a lot of our customers say, well, what about IP? Well, this is the wonderful thing. You build your IP around a core focus, a core capability, and everything you build is unique to your customer requirements and your product rollouts. For me, that's an incredible point of difference. Um, lastly, as I've said, adopting a true SaaS servicing model allows scalability, flexibility, and a different way of looking at things. Another way to consider composable banking is to think about it like this. So we all know the monolithic approach where there's a, a vendor lock-in. Um, we've got a tailor-made legacy system probably 15 years ago before the iPod where um, it's hard to move and pivot and scale. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of existing businesses find themselves in this silo and it's hard to, be, um, to deliver that speed to market and agility we speak of today. As we evolve, we get into what is a modular concept, whereby you can build out different pieces of the puzzle, but take one piece out and the entire thing collapses. There's no separation of concerns, and of course, there still is that vendor lock-in. How Mambu considers it is think Lego, where everything is awesome, but also Lego is composable. You can build different things out of different bricks that all serve their purpose and are not tied into one type of Lego, one type of vendor. That allows you to take off, take off fast, and pander to what the customer expectations are that we spoke of earlier. We need everything, we need everything now. So this composability makes it possible for a bank, for a lender, for a financial services provider to be composable and think differently about using what they prefer in each part of their ecosystem. A great way to think about composability, let's choose an area in which most businesses build out their own technology, which is origination. The whole idea of credit decisioning. Traditionally, that would be through a credit bureau, to the one technology um, and done in such a way. But these days, to build out a rich customer decisioning, we're looking at the emergence of open banking, data aggregation, different metrics that can allow us to make a different form of decisioning around our risk appetite. It's well and truly this ecosystem that ties into the credit decisioning. That is the best way to think about how Mambu delivers to market. We are at the core. We give you your product fact factory, your, your general ledger um, and your customer data. But then you're able to build out your adventure above the line in terms of your origination, credit decisioning, CRM systems, etc. And indeed below where you'd need to either build into existing capabilities or want to build out that, that regulatory accounting systems as well. The simplicity of connecting into this via Mambu's process orchestrator or your own integration uh, middleware makes this very easy to fulfill and build out and maintain and build that journey around the core that Mambu maintains with that singular focus. So it's very important to consider that in how do we roll out businesses, new products, how do we roll out into new geolocations, uh, how do we embrace this transformation we're struggling with but at the same time continue to innovate, which leads me to the second part and, and ultimately final part of, of this session, which is what are those cloud up approaches? What are my options? We at Mambu refer to this concept as speedboats, digital speedboats. What does that mean? Well, it speaks to the fact that in many instances, and certainly with established banks, you have your cruise ship. It's beautiful. It's a great ship. It's worked for years, but it takes a long time to turn it it takes a long time to slow it down, speed it up, uh, which makes innovation and speed to market quite difficult, if not impossible. Uh, it's a big change of thinking, mindset, resource, and everything that comes with it. Where Mambu have seen some great success and a new trend that's emerging is these larger cruise ships sending out their speedboats. What are those? They could, they're independent, they're lean and agile. As you see on the screen, it develops that innovation incubation, and it takes months to deliver rather than years. So it's a far more uh, effective way for larger banks and institutions to say, hey, let's, let's explore new tech stacks, let's explore new ways of doing it, but let's do it in a way that doesn't affect the cruise ship and gives us time to turn that as we move forward. 
Um, what type of speedboats would you see coming out? Well, faster product releases. A lot of the larger banks that we work with, such as ABN and AMRO and Santander, have launched new digital banking products as speedboats. Um, and of course, like I mentioned before, if you're looking at new territories, especially around APAC, where there's many market opportunities, um, you can use the speedboat way of thinking to achieve that rapid market entry and validation. So with those cloud up approaches, what does that look like when we're talking about existing technology and or new technology? Um, let's have a brief look, and these are the final minutes of the session, so thank you for your attention, is these three technological approaches to this. Think about it like painting, but not necessarily on a blank canvas, right? Um, because if you're a bank and you have this tech debt, you'll find that on your blank canvas there's a sort of gothic uh, monolithic thing here, and then there's maybe other um, paintings here that will impact what you want to create as a banking picture. Um, then again, a lot of people in the room today may be fortunate to have a greenfield opportunity and paint on that blank canvas. So let's briefly explore what those environments look like. The first approach may be a shared legacy. The second is on the edge. Um, operating on the peripheral, which we'll come to in a moment. And the third is that true spin-off away from existing or shared legacy. So the shared legacy call and the new call for a new bank means you can spin out a different team, new technology, new front end, a sort of new canvas, if you will, but fundamentally your processes are shared. Your back end technology is feasibly shared, and ultimately your banking charter is shared, which means you can spin out these products and enjoy the agility, but leverage those back end systems that your organization and risk appetite are comfortable with. And that's really important managing the risk as you evolve and innovate with your technology. The second is living on the edge a little, um, which I know a lot of banks in the area want to be able to do and want to think differently. So that's really about truly independent operational uh, operations, and often that's done through your venture divisions or, or other areas of the business, where the only thing you share is in, indeed that general ledger and the reporting, and you still obviously have that underwritten bank charter. So quite an interesting way to deal with things as well. The final one is your spin-off proposition and platform. So where it's truly different to that core banking, you can even have an independent charter and truly independent operations. Um, either of these ways work well. All of these things Mambu have done before with our client base, and each has their own intricacies and benefits. But fundamentally, building a bank from the cloud up considers building that ecosystem that creates freedom, the ability to respond quickly to customer demand. Who thought buy now, pay later would have been a thing even two years ago? And look at how the emerging criticality of these different financial services have now got everyone thinking, how can we do that? What can we spin out? Where does lending evolve into? How do we service different verticals? And Mambu are very confident in this composability, giving you that freedom to deliver such products. I'll close in suggesting we de-risk these bold decisions that are ahead of us. Let's make sure those decisions are right through validation. We have very successfully been able to land and expand this new way of thinking amongst our clients, and it's proving to be the right way to go about embracing change, the only constant we have today, and innovating our banks to where we need them to be for tomorrow's market and tomorrow's customers. Mambu could not be prouder of the partner network we've built. Um, we have a wealth of materials, listings, and case studies that we're more than willing to share with you so you can explore how building that ecosystem needn't be the confronting challenge it was so recently, and it will make you prouder and more bolder to explore what we can do in the future. So thank you again, everyone, for joining me today in this session and joining Mambu. You'll see at the bottom of your screen that uh, I have a LinkedIn handle. I'd love to connect with you, take these conversations further. Uh, but again, thank you for your time. I hope some of this resonated with you, and I look forward to, to driving that agenda for composability of banking being the future for financial services.